So hi everyone, I'm Jima from University of Virginia. Today I will introduce our recent work assessing the causal impact of COVID-19 related policies on outbreak dynamics. First, let's start with the background. COVID-19 has been affecting public health since 2019. And during the past few years, there have been various policies announced by governments to limit the impact of COVID-19 across the US, uh, such as social distancing, mask requirements, and travel risk restrictions. Uh, so to help future policymakers, a natural question is, which policy is more effective to control the impact of COVID-19 in a given context? Actually, there have been some works which address this question of COVID-19 policy assessment, but most of them can only capture the statistical dependent dependencies between the policies and the COVID-19 outbreak rather than the causal effects. But actually, the dependency and causal effects are different. For example, even if a policy cannot causally influence the spread of COVID-19, if both of them are influenced by a common variable, then they are still correlated in statistics. Therefore, answering the question from a causal perspective is essential, as it can provide guidance to policymakers for epidemic control. To assess the policies from a causal perspective, we rely on causal inference techniques. Causal inference aims to estimate the causal effects of a treatment on an outcome. Here we take the treatment as a certain policy and take outcome as the COVID-19 dynamics, such as the number of confirmed cases. And one of the main challenges in causal effect estimation is the existence of hidden confounders. Here confounders are variables which causally influence both the treatment and outcome. For example, if a county well, residents have a high vigilance towards COVID-19. The government may issue social distancing policies at a very early stage, but residents here also tend to be very alert to COVID-19 and says they will have a very low infection risk, even without the policies. Here, the resident vigilance is a confounder, which brings correlations between the treatment and outcome. And unbiased causal effect estimation needs to control for all the confounders. However, the confounders are often unobserved and time varying, so they are often very hard to control. So in this work, to study causal effects, we take each county in the US as a unit and collect uh, treatment as whether a specific policy is in effect or not. So it is a binary value in different countries. And we take the outcome as two different variables, including the number of confirmed cases and the number of death cases in different counties. To control for the confounders, even if confounders might be unobserved, we can still use some proxy variables to capture the count capture confounders. So in this work, we collect the features for each county, um, which are data that reflect the confounders. And we also uh, collect some relational information among different counties, like the distance network. So we assume that these features and the networks are correlated with the unobserved confounders, so we can utilize them to capture the confounders. So in this work, we collect data from uh, more than 300 counties in the US and we highlight them in blue in the map. So for the treatment, we collect about 60 COVID-19 related policies that were in effect in USA in 2020 from the Department of Health and Human Services, along with their descriptions and start and end dates. So the collected, Policies include both state level and county level ones. For the outcome, we use the daily numbers of confirmed cases and death cases. Here, we also use features of counties to infer the confounders. For example, we consider the web search of COVID 19 related keywords as proxies for residents' vigilance. 
we select a set of COVID-19 related keywords, and then we obtain the popularity score in every county to indicate how vigilant the residents in the county are. Many other covariants such as the weather and uh, demographic information in each county can also be included. And previous works have shown that network structure among different units can often reflect some observed confounders. Therefore, in this work, we also use two kinds of networks, including the geographical distance network and mobility flow network among the selected counties. By intuition, the counties with shorter distances or larger amount of mobility flows may have more similar confounders. To explore whether the proxies have the potential to capture the unobserved confounders, we conduct pre preliminary data analysis. Here we explore the dependencies between the number of confirmed cases and distance network. Here we show two heat maps. The left one shows the correlation between the confirmed case number series in different counties. And the second figure shows the distance between, uh, between the counties. Generally, we notice that many county pairs with shorter distance are more likely to have higher correlation with respect to the confirmed cases. Here, we formulate the causal assessment of COVID-19 related policy types as a causal effect estimation problem. We develop a neural network-based framework CIDR to capture the time-varying confounders and make causal assessments for policies. In the time varying setting, we consider multiple time periods, and we assume that the previous data can causally influence the confounders in current time period. So here, we need to capture the observed confounders from the current features, networks, and all the historical information. Our framework captures the time varying confounders from the involving observed observational data at different time periods. We handle each policy separately to get a binary treatment, indicating whether this policy is in effect or not. First, we learn representations for time varying confounders at each time period. Here we use a, a recurrent neural network to extract the useful historical information from the data at previous time periods. And we also use a graph neural network model to process the network information. Based on the learned confounder representations, the, we estimate the potential outcomes at treatment. Here, uh, our prediction for the potential outcomes corresponding to two cases when we take the treatment or not. And the final loss consists of these parts, the outcome prediction loss the treatment prediction loss and a balancing loss, which is a typical method to improve the causal inference uh, performance. And also we add a model parameter regularization term. Finally, we estimate the causal effect of each policy at each county by taking the difference between the two potential outcomes at each time period. Finally, in the experiment, we collect data across 391 counties during the whole year of 2020. And we uh, set every 15 days as one time period. So based on the uh, causal effect estimation, we assess the impact of different policies on both macro and micro levels. Here in the micro level, we try to assess which, which category of policies is more effective. And in a micro level, we will zoom into each category and investigate which specific policy type is more, in, is more effective. Here shows a overview of the categories of policies. We list three main categories and the examples of representative policy types, including the social distancing, uh, reopening, and mask requirement. Here we show the uh, causal assessment at macro level. It is the average causal effect of each policy types on all counties 
across the year 2020. When causal effect is zero, it means that policy has no causal effect on the daily confirmed cases. So at the macro level, we um, observe that the policy types regarding social distance and mask requirements have negative causal effects on both number of confirmed cases and death cases. Here we only show the case of uh, confirmed cases. While the policy types about reopening have positive causal effects, these negative values of causal effects indicate that the corresponding policy types causally help reduce the spread of COVID-19, while the policy types with positive values may have a contrary effect because they increase the risk of infection. These observations are consistent with the common knowledge and existing literature regarding COVID-19 related policies. This indicates that, that our framework have the ability to assess different policies. So at the micro level, we zoom into the most impactful policy types in each category. In the category of social distancing, we show the, um, our assessment of different policy types. So here we can see the uh, policy types gathering and food and drink seem to have the strongest effects. As they powerful prohibit, uh, as they powerfully prohibit the number of individuals in different important activities. So taking the food and drink policy type as an example, we list several uh, detailed descriptions of these policy types in different contexts. From the detailed description, we can say that this policy type limits the physical contacts in high risk places such as restaurants and bars. Due to the lack of counterfactual outcomes when the treatment is different from the observed one, it is very hard to evaluate the performance causal effect estimation directly. But fortunately, we can use the prediction performance of the observed outcome and treatment as in good indicators to show the potential of the proposed framework in capturing the confounders and the causal assessment. So here, we compare the prediction performance of our proposed framework with multiple baselines, including several state-of-the-art um, causal effect estimation frameworks and uh, some variant of our method. We show that our, free, our method can achieve both high performance in outcome and treatment prediction, which implicitly indicate that our method can capture confounders and make good um, causal assessment. Here comes to the conclusion part. So in this work, we collected and pre-processed the COVID-19 related data to support the target research question. That is, which policy is more effective to control the impact of COVID-19? And we um, addressed this problem by developing a novel codal effect estimation framework study. And then we investigate the codal effect of different policies on the outbreak dynamics of COVID-19 at both macro level and micro level. In the future, there still remains a lot of interesting work to do. For example, we can investigate the causal impact of COVID-19 policies on other aspects of human life, like education, uh, economics, and others. And also, we can study the relations of different policies and their joint effect. While well, in this work, we separately estimate different policies. And then we can combine some experimental data through uh, some randomized control trials, although um, in practice, it's very hard to get. If it is available, we can combine them with our causal assessments from the observational data to make assessment. Thank you for listening. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, do we have questions?
and I don't see any in the chat. Uh, perhaps I can ask a question. Um, so you showed that you're using uh, proxy variables, right? And yeah. you you use two networks, if I'm not mistaken, one yes. local network and one uh, mobility network. Uh, I was wondering, is this mobility network also capturing if people are flying instead of driving? So I, I guess the first network was a road network. Is... Yeah, we collect them from some uh, devices. I think it would include different kinds of uh, transportation. Uh, so these are just to, uh, a tra uh, tracing from their smartphones and something like that okay so mm -hmm. it's basically capturing all kinds of transportation yeah okay yeah okay well, thanks. I, I have a question yes uh, yeah uh, thank you for your presentation it's a very interesting topic and i mm -hmm. i wonder uh i'm not sure if i missed it uh do you incorporate the 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 number of cases from the adjacent neighbors of, of a certain location because i think uh despite of the policies i think uh if if the neighboring locations have a large number of infected cases then it will have a significant effect on on a current location compared to, that to um, policies yeah we didn't um uh, take the um, number of cases from numbers uh, from neighbors as the treatment. Here we only investigate the um, causal effect of policies. But I think that is also an important information source for us to utilize in the future. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 